the fuck? Oh, wait, hold on. J. Uh, no? Oh, what? It's weird. It's like out of order and shit. Oh, out of order and shit. Out of order. You're out of order. This, this whole, whole show's out of order. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. The thing with one head. Nah, don't worry. Chris hasn't gone anywhere. But we did record this last episode as one giant episode and it ended up being four hours long. And I figured, you know what? I should split it into two. So I'm just recording this little intro to the second part of this episode, which is now going to be episode 22. We are going to answer some more fan questions right now. And then after that, we're going to jump in to finishing the ranking the Elm Street films with Piggy D from Rob Zombie, a.k.a. Count D, a.k.a. Matt. So get ready, because here it comes. And by the way, Merry Christmas. Mist who sent this to me. I printed it out, and I accidentally threw away the page before it. Um, but whoever sent this, thank you. And someone said, hey, fellas, another awesome episode. I've got to give some love to the following soundtracks. Judgment Night, The Wildlife, Repo Man, and Magnolia. Mm. Um, love the Judgment Night soundtrack. That's the mm. one where they took like the, the rap bands and the metal bands. And they're like Faith No More and Booyah Tribe, mm. uh, Helmet, and uh, House of Pain. That's one of my mm. favorite ones, um, the Helmet, House of Pain one. Um, but yeah, just the bo another body murdered. Of Faith No More and Booyah Tribe is a really good one. That's a good track. The Wildlife, wasn't it? wasn't that Eddie Van Halen? Eddie Van Halen did the score yeah. to that. Yeah. 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 Question for Sean. Did you ever correspond with the late Amanda Peterson of Can't Buy Me Love fame or any stories? No. Never met her. Question for Christopher. What was your favorite makeup effect that Chainsaw and Dave pulled off in the movie Summer School? <laughs> That's a funny question. It is. Uh, I liked, I think one of my favorite things was when the substitute teacher walks in and sees them all dead in different ways, you know, the ruler and the. Yeah. Well, I think he's asking and, which one of those did you like the best? Oh, which one which, of those? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I like, um, wasn't there an eyeball pencil guy? That's a good one. Yeah. Isn't there an eyeball on the pencil? And, uh, and then I like Johnny the Smith had the ruler. I like the ruler. I like the ruler. And I liked when the hand comes up and pulls the tongue out of the guy's mouth. Was, I like them all. I like yeah. them all. I think I'd have good. to go with the tongue coming out of Patrick Labateau's mouth. That was a good one. Yeah. And I yeah. think the, the nerdy kid had the buzz saw. Oh, yeah. Face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. 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 And they kind of copped out on. Kelly Jo Mentor, she wasn't she just kind of oh no it wasn't Kelly Jo Mentor she's the one who had the blood on her it was uh, Fabiana Andenio uh, was right. just hanging like the corpse yeah that's right <clears throat> yeah but actually the bunnies was cool the, the bunnies was good I like the no. bunnies yeah yeah bunnies from hell <laughs> shot at Knott's Berry Farm yeah yeah Norman well, Cabrera I think Norman Cabrera did all that oh did stuff. he uh huh really cool yeah. we still gotta have him on. We do. He's he's standing by. He's he's starting to get a little yeah. antsy. Come on, Norm. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Come on. All right. Come on. <laughs> Jake the Snake Pliskin. <laughs> That's a good name. Jake it's the Snake one. Pliskin. Have you guys ever seen Akira Kurosawa's Thorn of Blood? Hmm. One of my favorite films. It's a Macbeth adaptation, but in feudal Japan. Has very horror atmosphere and Toshiro Mifune's performance as a man descending into madness is just incredible. Also, with the holidays coming up, I'm curious your thoughts on the original Black Christmas. Have a great holidays, guys. Hmm. I've never seen Thorn of Blood. Have you? I have not either. No. It sounds interesting. It does. I'm going to check it out. I just got a package. As, as far as the original Black I like the original Black Christmas. Oh, it's, love it. It's, it's, yeah, it's good. Woo! It came from what's that? You remember, oh. these, you remember the old monster books? Sure, yeah. This Look is one that. of the ones I was missing. I just I mm. ordered it on eBay. I'm still missing. I'm missing one, two, three. I have all of them, but three. I'm missing mm. Murders in the Rue Morgue, Phantom of the Opera, and The Invisible Man. Oh. Still looking. Go on eBay almost every day looking for them. Every day. I'll get them eventually. I'll get them. 
Tony Floyd said, I seen John Cusack at a Roger Waters concert in 2017, chilling by himself. It looked like didn't see anyone with him. Seems like a weird guy. Also, Sean, I did contribute. LOL. <laughs> oh, OK. Thank you. Um, right. Yeah. For Thank those you. of you who contributed, um, you know, make sure to uh, send me your address via Instagram and um, I'll make sure to get you get you stickers. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. I bumped into John Cusack the first time I ever saw him or corresponded with him was at a concert at the Palace in Hollywood, which is now the Avalon. It was Fishbone, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Jane's Addiction. <clears throat> and I was right up at the front of the stage. This is probably 1989, maybe 90. Oh, wow. And, uh, I looked over on the side, standing on stage to the side was John Cusack standing mm. with Ioni Sky, mm. probably like right after they had shot uh, Say Anything. And I know Ioni was dating Anthony of the mm. Chili Peppers at the time. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and he was wearing a Guar t-shirt and he had a red bandana on. <laughs> and I, I remember that. And I looked at him and I made eye contact with him and I pointed at him. And I go like this, like I'm like, you know, I was a big fan. And he goes like this, he goes, and I was like, I didn't know what he meant. Then he ran and did a stage dive over me into the <laughs> crowd. Wow. Didn't see him again the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, I liked John Cusack even more because of that. I was like, this guy's right. real. He's awesome. But then I met right. him yeah. at a convention years ago. And, uh, yeah. Never meet people that you like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rampage of 78 says, Hey guys, glad your show is doing well. I asked this a couple of times on the live show. So forgive me for spamming <laughs> with asking multiple times, but for Sean, I was wondering if you had seen the discovery of the lost H five footage, potentially with the SWAT team scene, wondered if you knew if that will ever come to light. I think that would be so cool to have a ultra violent cut of H five. I've heard about it. Hmm. I have no idea what's going on with it, but I heard that there was lost footage found. I haven't heard if that particular SWAT team scene has been found, but mm -hmm. I heard that whole different opening was definitely discovered. Mm -hmm. um, you can pretty much guarantee that at some point they will It'll come out yeah. quadruple dip into that. You know. Well, especially after the ultra violent Halloween kills comes out, then they'll start releasing. Yeah ultra violent versions of these movies just like eventually we'll probably have a a different cut of 2018 with the different ending sure. it'll all happen sure. eventually yeah m martinez says congratulations on 20 episodes and 10k followers my favorites so far are 4 5 10 and 11 <laughs> Okay, I don't wow. specifically know which getting, ones those are. People are ranking the show. <laughs> yeah. You guys should do your own ranking episodes. Yeah. Um, a question for you both. What is Chris's favorite Halloween franchise mask he's done to date? Well, I yeah, that's kind of you can't really talk about that because it's I you know, you guys haven't seen everything. So um, you know, that's kind of, um, it is an odd question. Yeah. Um, I'm, that's a, that's a question you'd ask after Halloween ends comes out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Like, yeah. Ask me that in a couple of years. Sean, what is your favorite Halloween franchise mask you own? Oh, um, well, I guess if you're talking about real ones, I don't know if you mean real ones or, I mean, I own fan ones too. I don't, you know. If they're talking about screen used, I'd go with the part six that's from H2O. Gabriel R. Johnson said, hey, Sean and Chris, I just saw a movie on Shudder called Society that came out in 1989, directed by Brian Usna, director of Return of the Living Dead Part 3, and was wondering if you all both seen it and what your thoughts are on it. Well, clearly you haven't watched our previous episodes because we talked <laughs> we talked about Society quite heavily in recent episode. We did, yeah. It wasn't that long ago because we were going on about Screaming Mad George's effects and how weird it was yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, watch the first twenty episodes and get back to us. Um. <laughs> let's see. P.S. Thank you for you guys for making the thing with two heads. It truly feels like I'm hanging out with two best friends, enjoying hearing Chris saying "meh." 
You guys rock. And Man. remember, eating brains makes the pain go away. Okay. Man. We'll Man. see you just like your good friends would do it. Be like, bro, go watch the fucking episode. Man. 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 Man to that question. Man. Man. <laughs> Uh, John Sateka said, still loving the show, guys. Sean, have you as a collector checked out Kevin Yeager's props for sale on his website? Yes, I have. And I almost bought a couple things, but then I didn't. Lunatic Noobs said, hi, Sean. I was wondering if you would do another live stream. I don't know why you're asking me directly, but yes, we're going to do another live episode at some point. <laughs> um, Cause he knows you're the, you wear the pants in this whole show. Um, he, Cause everybody can pretty much tell like, man, if Sean didn't want to do it, Chris wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, the um, live oof. thing was my idea. I'm pretty sure. It was your idea. Um, yes, we are going to do another live show. We just got to figure out when. Yeah. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. we should give some shit away. We've been saying we're going to do that and we don't do it. We need to do it we've been saying we're going to do it for 20 episodes now and we have to give it away. And I should, I'm telling you, should I auction out or should we give away a, a mummy mask? Do you think anyone would want that? I think we should for the lot during the live. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, it'll be part of the raffle thing we do with the, gotcha. The, you know, copy that. Sorry. I'm eating M&Ms. I'm hungry. Okay. I wish I had some, I'd be eating them too. I do have some Cheez-Its. Call him my name. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> okay, our good friend, the ever scathed, ever scathed devil times five, devil times five. <laughs> Another awesome episode. You guys have had so many great interviews, but this new one with Fred Decker was one of the best. It was a good one. I was like 10 or 11 the first time I saw Monster Squad, and it instantly became a staple in our house. We had an old VHS copy and we taped off a cable the same tape as lost boys how ironic that it was lost boys that kind of crushed monster squad in the theater mm, mm. um that would run on repeat every time we had friends by i always totally loved night of the creeps as well and remember totally freaking out the first time i noticed monster squad rules scratched on the bathroom stall and thinking they're in the same universe this was as huge for me being a big Marvel DC comics reader back in the day. Keep up the excellent work. My friends make sure to record a bunch of episodes while Chris is quarantined in Australia. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a good chance to get ahead of the game for when you guys get busy with real life hails and cheers from W fricking Steen, the ever scathed, the ever scathed. Thank you. That's very nice. And yes, we will. Hopefully do some some stuff from Australia. It's going to be tough because they're 19 hours ahead. Well, fortunately, you don't have a good sleeping pattern anyway. Really. I don't. I don't. So we'll be able to. Yeah, I'll be. That, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be fun. I think. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I do. I think it's going to be. It's going to get weird. Yeah, we might see you actually mentally breaking down like <laughs> on the show. Like you're like, yeah, yeah, this fucking room, man. Yeah, get out of this room. Yeah, it could happen. It could have. That's what I mean. It's gonna be weird. I'm looking forward to it. You know, we should do a one thing every single day to see a how my looks deteriorate <laughs> and also my mental <laughs> my mental stability is just gonna yeah. go out the window. Yes. Yeah. And then they're gonna and then they're gonna shove me out after breaking me down for fourteen days. Then they're gonna put me to work. Yeah, and I got. I'm gonna be like, ah, man, I forgot. Anyway, you're gonna start being like fucking Jack Torrance. Like, oh, totally. Yeah, I'll be like Chris. You know, people want the shirts to come out, and you'll be like, "Fuck, do you want me to do about it?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You exactly. know, Sean. Every time you DM me. <laughs> Every time you break right. my concentration, I'm like, whoa, bro, hey, come here. Whether you send me an invite, whether you don't send me an invite, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm in this room. I'm fucking sleeping, all right? <laughs> um, Lee Fusion Robinson said, question for Chris, have you ever worked on any Hellraiser films? I have not. I would have loved to, um, but no, I have not. Question for yeah. Sean. Would you ever consider doing a Horrors Hall of Grounds episode on the Lost Boys? 
dude you're not watching the show i've talked about this a lot <laughs> you've been asked that question like 10 times I, I i i have said several times i am working on a lost boys episode right now actually the only thing that has held it back was this show no quarantine <laughs> The, the 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 lockdown i i was ready nay and i were ready to go to santa cruz for a few days and i was gonna knock out the rest of it right. and um you know everything's on lockdown it's like um, yeah we're, we're back on lockdown here in la you yeah. guys all of california yeah so, yeah. so um you know i want to be able to go and get into the amusement park and actually ride the merry-go-round and everything so I'm holding back um, on that. I just finished sh doing a reanimator episode, which I'm editing right now. Mm. Um, and it's going to be a short one because they're all the interiors with the exception of the house, the, uh, that Dan Kane lived in mm. were all uh, sets. And um, I obviously did. It's a private residence. I no nobody's going to let me in their house during fucking COVID. It's not going to happen. So, yeah. but uh, it was fun. It was fun to finally find all those places. But that's that's the next episode. I'm also editing the Halloween Rob Zombie's Halloween episode right now as well, which is a monster. I mean, it, whew, it's a lot of I a lot of info on that. Um, uh, Lex three Luthor twelve. I don't know if Ooh. that's like. I guess Luthor one. Um, Sean, are you tight with the Kyoto brothers from Critters or any of the cast? Uh, yes, I know the Kyoto brothers quite well, all three of them. Um, I guess if you're just asking, yes, I know them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're asking if we'd have them on the show. Um, I'd love to at some point. Uh, I don't know if we'd have all three on at the same time, but that'd be um, a lot. That would be, be a lot. lot. Charlie's kind of the most talkative of the bunch. So probably Charlie. Um, I worked for them once. A long once, time ago once <laughs> once yeah a long time ago on the amazing live sea monkeys television show oh wow well i was trying to remember what that was johnny dangerously that's what i was thinking yeah. my dad hit me once <laughs> once <laughs> once yeah <laughs> great movie Joe Piscopo. yeah dude some somebody i'm friends with posted a photo with him recently mm -hmm. I, wow, what's he, going on with him dude he looks like a different person I would have had no clue that's who it was in the photo. Really? Because remember he was on like the cover of Muscle and Fitness he, forever and he was all gacked out and fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Now he anymore. just he just looks different. Looks like me. Yeah. L66 Incubo said Demons <laughs> and Demons 2 have great soundtracks. Mm. Kathy's Curse is one weird. Can, can you. I guess he's a Canadian exploitation film. He's called Can You Exploitation? I know that's what. Um, also, based on this show, I don't think IMDb has a completed list of the work you've done, Chris. I could be wrong, just saying. That's true. It's not, everything's not on there. But a lot's on there, but not everything. The Music and Movie Man. That's a new one. He said, Hey guys, big fan of the show. I've listened to every episode twice. And truly Ooh. enjoy the chemistry between the two of you. You should see Ooh. us after dark. <laughs> uh, for my job, I work as an educational assistant at a therapeutic day school for children with special needs and developmental disabilities. I absolutely love what, what I do, but my job can be pretty tiring at times. Listening to you guys helps me relax and unwind after a long day at work. And I've always, and I always look forward to new episodes as they are released. Thanks for everything you do for the fans. I can't wait for more episodes. Take care dudes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. A noble, noble, noble profession you have there, sir. So thank you. I'm glad we can contribute to your stress. <laughs> um, and now we have a, a message from Colin Murdy. Oh, is it our friend Colin Murdy's back? How is that lad? It's been a long time since he called Marty. I miss that lot. Where have you been, lot? I don't hear from you a while. I'd like to hear from you, Colin Murdy. What do you got to say today? Sean, tell us what Murdy has to say today. Go. Are you trying to do the, the sped up version? <laughs> 
Uh, well, hello there from Belfast once again. Really enjoyed episode 20. Another very entertaining guest and really engaging throughout your show without doubt is still the highlight of my weekly viewing schedule. Oh, that's the highlight. Right? <laughs> Keep dishing out the fun times, guys. Oh, and the amazing out. content. Oh, the amazing content dishing it out for you. Just for you, Marty. Dishing it out. <laughs> Just for you. I'm sorry, it's making me laugh. Uh, do you guys ever think you could get Reggie Bannister or Don Coscarelli on the show sometime? A Phantasm ranking show would be cool. Take care, you pair. Stay safe. Stay safe. <clears throat> um, Reggie is a old, long friend. Long. That just sounded wrong. So I called him old. Weird. He is I was a... going to let it go, but I'm not going. <laughs> He's an old friend. Known him a long time. Is he long then? How long is he? That's what she said. Um, I don't know how technologically sound, uh, you know, um, sound uh, Reggie is in regards to like Zoom and all that stuff. If he's got the the means, but mm. I could I could definitely give him a call and ask. Mm. You know, he, yeah. the regiment. You know, Sean, it's always a good time. You know, talking to you, the regiment. <laughs> How was he a dial you know? up? Was he still on AOL? <laughs> <Was> he... <laughs> well, he paged me yesterday and I, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I, I called I him find... back and he answered from a pay phone. He's such a hippie. He's great. I love Reggie. Yeah, he seems like it. Charlie 10. Hello. This question is for Chris. I'm wondering oh. about high end collectible one, one scale busts that have silicone as the media. These are not cheap to purchase. What is your opinion on the longevity of the silicone? Will it break down after 10 to 20 years or sooner? Great show. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Mike. Ooh, Mike. Um, silicone doesn't really break down. Um, I mean, the more you handle it, the more the paint rubs off and the more wear and tear you have. But silicone lasts a good lot. I mean, longer than latex or foam like there. I would... But they are, it is pricey, like a silicone bust is, that's because it's expensive material and it's harder to mold. The molds are more difficult and complicated and pouring it up and the painting of it is different. So that's why they're more expensive. I thought of doing a silicone uh, Myers bust, high end silicone Myers, like the one I have, um, and put the mask on it boop, and buy that as a high end thing. But I don't think people could afford it. I, I, I don't, I don't know how many you would sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, to make it worth manufacturing them. So many of them. So. Gabriel R. Johnson said, thank you, Sean, for giving a shout out to my comment about how much the thing with two heads has helped me relieved to get away from all the negative and, politics that we are constantly dealing with in this cruel world i just want to send my blessings <laughs> to you sexy gents haha -ha. hugs for chris and sean and goddamn does chris sound almost like george romero with that pittsburgh accent haha -ha, love you guys hopefully y'all visit the alamo and see if there's a basement in the alamo and sean have you been to alamo city comic-con in san antonio well, thank you for that comment. There's a lot to digest yeah. there. Um, hugs were sexy. Yeah, Let's well, give us hugs. That's very flattering. That's, that's a given. Sexy and hugs. I mean, um, there is a basement in the Alamo. And what was was there more questions? He asked me if I'd ever been to Alamo City uh, Comic Con, and yes, I I had. Yeah, it's been a while. Hmm. Um, and oddly enough, I went to the Alamo with Sean hmm. Patrick Flannery. We went hmm. to the Alamo. I remember that while we were there. Hmm. Did not see the basement. Didn't go inside. Took a picture outside in front of it. That was about it. Easy the third said, as for the whole scream thing, they did that to try and boost the sale. I think he's talking about the name. Not calling it Scream 5. Hmm. Movies typically do not do well once you get four, five, and six because to the daily consumer, they'll think, well, I'm not going to see it because it's going to have to watch the other four movies before this one. With the title Scream, it's a new clean slate. Scream 4 didn't do well at the box office. That's the most logical thing I can come up with from what I've seen and heard. Good to know. It's there. Boom. It's been said. He's cleared it up. Special Ed <laughs> says, fellas, another Special solid Ed. episode. The Devil Times 5 stuff was seriously great. <laughs> 
Christopher, what's a film that you agreed to do but didn't More have times happen? five. <laughs> there, I answered it. No, go ahead. What? What's a film that you agreed to do but didn't have the highest hopes for but turned out really surprising to you in the end? Oh, Jesus. You guys ask weird questions. I uh, appreciate them, though. Uh, you mean a film that I didn't want to do but agreed to do it and it turned out good? Or something that you did that you're like, oh, this movie's going to be garbage and end up being... Wow, this is actually pretty good. Oh, uh, it's almost every movie that you work on. You're like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be garbage. Um, really? I was going to say, I've no, seen, none of your no, films are very good. So I was trying to. That's it's true. No. Um, that's why it's hard to answer this question because nothing I've worked on ever turned out very good. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's a good question. I got to think of that one. Um, I don't go into the movie thinking it's not going to be good. And then while you're shooting it, you, you have no idea there has, well, there's been some things I'm on, like going, Oh, this is going to suck. Um, and turned out sucky. So, um, that's a good question. I can't, you know, I have nothing comes to mind. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Nothing so comes all to the mind. movies you thought were going to be garbage pretty much were garbage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Fair enough. Um, uh, uh, I will say, and I've said this before, I, I, it's not that I didn't want to do it. I, I wasn't really keen on doing Suicide Squad. I didn't really want to do that one only because I was tired, not because of the subject matter. And I, and I, I for whatever reason, I, I reluctantly took it. And thank God I did. Yeah. I mean, the movie didn't turn out that great, but Movie's thank garbage, God I did. But you got and, an so, Academy Award, so there you go. Exactly. So yeah. that's... That's yeah. a, that's one of those things when you're at a big Hollywood party and it's like, oh, you know, Chris won an Academy Award. No, oh, really? You got Academy Award? What for? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Academy Award. Yeah, Suicide Squad. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> totally. hey, yeah. Hey, is that is that Steven Spielberg over there? Like, yeah, Wait, totally. what was the movie you said? I don't see Suicide Squad. Is that, I think that's the Berg over there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that that's actually quite common. It's like, oh, you want, I heard you won an Academy Award. I was on set recently. Someone came up to me. I don't know why or how, but someone came up to me and went, I heard you won an Academy Award. I'm like, yeah. And they go, what, what'd you win for? And I go, Suicide Squad. And they're like, oh, no, like seriously. it's that. Like, like no, seriously. Oh. No, what'd you, what'd you win it for? Like, have you gotten one of those I, yet? Like, <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> uh, well, kind of pretty much, but, but just not quite that direct. It's like the reaction. <laughs> it's like, you're like, what'd you win? Suicide Squad. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Well, good for you, man. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, I got to I got to do a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Some people like that movie, though, man. Well, they're out there. They're out there. They're out there. Daniel Caruso. Fuck you. Good evening, guys. Congratulations on 20 episodes. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I can't wait for the shirts. I'll wear it with pride. To answer the fellow Haunted Mansion lover, I mold and cast for my next door neighbor who owns the company, Alternative Images Productions. I didn't sculpt the mansion plaque, but I did mold, cast, and paint it. Again, <laughs> it's so great listening to you guys every week along with interviews. I mean, to be able to interact with you guys is so cool. Thank you so much. So it was Daniel Caruso, who, Ooh. yeah, I couldn't remember exactly who it was that sent him when we were put on the spot when we were shooting the episode. Um, Nice. So I'm guessing, I guess Google Alternative Images Productions. Maybe they have a website. He didn't really answer that part of the question that I was asking. Mm. If there mm. was a place people could buy them, but maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's where you, that's where you go and pick one up. Maybe, <laughs> or maybe not. Or maybe not. I'm just gonna go on record right now, real quick. It's getting darker. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> The light changes in this pl in, in this room. It's terrible. I gotta find a different room to do this. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I want I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm getting. It's go. getting darker. So, <laughs> that so if you're watching, I'm starting to look better. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's getting darker, and I'm not gonna hunt around, put lights on. So just deal with me being in the dark. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Let's see, D uh, Drake Casmiri. Boy, this is a hell of a name. Drake Kazmierczak. K-A-Z-M-I-E-R-C-Z-A-K. Wow. I think I got it close. Hey, guys, love the show. Both of you and Chris have great chemistry. And I'm always... I think people are trying to set us up. I don't know. I know. It's weird. It's no. not going to happen, guys. No, no. We both, we, we both have 
female significant others. Oh. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. But okay, uh, I'm always looking forward to the next episode. Sean, I watched the Friday Thirteenth box set movie location featurette, and man, it just wasn't the same. It goes to show that not just anyone can do those. You think? Um, it really felt like Scream Factory cheaped out by not having you make the episode. Looking forward to seeing the Friday 13th locations on Horrors Hall Grounds someday in the future. By the way, if you're looking for new ideas for content, I would like to see Chris show off some of his work. Stuff he can show, of course. Chris, are you working on anything for fun? If so, I would love to see it on the show. Thanks, you guys rock. Oh. Now it's time to finally break out some of that crochet you've been doing dude it is getting like crazy dark right now can you turn on a light (laughs) is there i told you i could put up a light yeah i mean suddenly but things like it's suddenly here i'm like fading off into the i kind of like it well i don't have much time left on my power left how much more not that i'm tiring out i'm not i'm just i'm gonna have to recharge soon (laughs) <laughs> let's we'll just get through it if he goes dark people he goes dark if anyway, i go dark fucking we, he's obviously it. not going to show any of his work tonight because you can't even see him so <laughs> well you've seen some of it you see my hair is that better that's a little better that's a little no. better yeah i have the my mummy mask which i made recently and i have the creep show that i finished you saw you guys saw that mm-hmm. i have uh, another sculpture going right now which isn't finished so i can't show that i paint all the time um, yeah, I have stuff, but I mean, but meh, meh. <laughs> but meh. Alex Bailey said, uh, the funniest thing about your show is that Chris oozes. I don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be bothered. Why did I agree to do this? I can't believe we've done more than one show. My body, Nailed language, it. <laughs> my body language says I'm thinking I could be doing so many different things right now. <laughs> It makes the show even better. Anyway, thanks for many hours of solid entertainment. Terrific show. Wow, I I didn't know you being such a grumpy cat could be so entertaining to people. I'm sorry, were you talking? Exactly. Chris Blankenship <laughs> said, I'm so happy to see Fred. I actually wrote his favorite review of Robocop 3 of all time. And I'm going to be sending in a one sheet from that film for his signing with CPA Authentics. I'm thrilled to see the Monster Squad picking up more and more momentum in its cult status and appreciation. And so excited to hear he's written a screenplay during the pandemic. We need more of Fred's work in the world, films and stories with heart and sincerity and this incredible affection for the resilience of the human spirit, which I said in that review of RoboCop 3, you could absolutely feel embedded in Fred's work. He's absolutely phenomenal. Great episode and interview, guys. Woohoo! I'm sure Fred appreciates that. Scott Bat- Batchelor. Bacula? Bat- it's Batchelor. <laughs> I mean, it's not Bachelor. It's like Batch, B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R. Bachelor. Bachelor. Is, that, is, he, is he like a, a single cosmic atomic robot? He might be. Batchelor. <laughs> hey, guys. Great shows. Sean, as for you liking the Valley Girl soundtrack, back in the mid-90s, Rhino released a two-part collection of the songs from the movie. It didn't have the actual movie artwork, just a chick blowing a neon bubble. It's a great movie as well. Savage Streets also has an awesome soundtrack as well. What do you think of Hell Knight? Sean, we both have a love for Terror Train. I used to have that Valley Girl soundtrack, but I think I got rid of it, the one that he's talking about. It was on CD. But the bootleg one I'm talking about is way better because it's like two records just every song that's used in the movie it's a primo that's a pizza with all of it um what do i think of hell knight it's it's okay it's not the linda blair yeah linda Linda blair Blair, peter barton yeah brandon patterson said i have trouble watching intercutting movie hosts as well and joe bob's rants can go on a little long especially Keep up the good work, guys. You're building an audience organically, which ain't no small thing. Question for you both. Are you dropping any Raisinets or M&Ms into your popcorn? No. No, but I was just eating M&Ms, and I like Raisinets, I, and I like popcorn. I, I like a, a peanut M&M separate from my popcorn. Scoop of popcorn, cup of peanut M&Ms. Scoop mm-hmm. of popcorn, 
couple of me. I can't mix them together. I don't like that. Do you not like like <clears throat> even you get that pre bought like the chocolate popcorn like the no, like you, you don't like caramel corn or no? I don't want people telling me how I need to ration my um, my mix. I like to be in control of my mix of salty and sweet. Do you like kettle corn? I don't want anyone telling me how much I should ration what do you like kettle corn pop i do like kettle corn oh. I, but kettle corn is of its own ilk it's one thing okay um <laughs> rumple foreskin nice buddy <laughs> oh rumpled foreskin nice even better good choice <laughs> uh oh man it's my eye not Maybe you got it right after I say rumpled foreskin. I got something exactly. in my eye. Hey guys, I wanted to extend my congratulations on reaching 10K, a well deserved achievement. We're at 10.3K right now, mind you. Hopefully, when this airs, 10.5. We'll see. Um, a well deserved achievement. I have two questions for you one for Sean and one for Christopher. Sean, have you ever seen the movie Burnt Offerings starring Karen Black? If so, was the same house used in Burn Offerings used in Phantasm as well? Yes, I have seen the movie. Yes, I like it. Yes, it is the Dunsmere Mansion in Oakland that was used for the mausoleum in Phantasm and the house in Burn Offerings and the house in So I Married an Axe Murderer. And it was also in a James Bond movie. Christopher, when you prepare a mask or makeup, do you exaggerate the colors on the makeup slash masks for the camera to pick up more details in the appliances than going for a more realistic look from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you guys for creating this great podcast. The amount of joy and camaraderie com, camaraderie. God, I can't talk tonight. You guys bring <laughs> truly, let me just do that again. Cause I know it's going to be an editing nightmare. The amount of joy and camaraderie you guys bring truly is the best vaccine to give us, to give all of us my deepest appreciation, James. Well, oh, thanks, only, James. If only our show was the cure, right? If only it was. So to answer, thanks, this James. Question. That was nice, nice of you. Um, yeah, you do change things sometimes. Depends on how it's shot, kind of camera, how it's lit, what the tone of the film is, what the palette of the is, with the how the director's shooting it. Yeah, you, you, you sometimes you pump stuff up, colors, textures. Uh, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want super realistic, and you want it to to photograph realistic so yeah you do i alter paint jobs and and things like that all the time yeah so like if chris was you know if there was to be a makeup on chris right now he would totally over exaggerate it because you can't That's see right because you can't see me all you see is this floating <laughs> floating head golf ball of a head i don't know what's going on this it's is like that scene of you in halloween 2018 behind jamie you know it's like this just his head oh that's true boogeyman ben I'm a lifelong fan of Fred Decker's work, especially Night of the Creeps. Love Monster Squad 2, as well as his work on Tales from the Crypt. Like you, Sean, I actually really enjoyed The Predator and love that it was not politically correct, which is getting way out of hand when it comes to movies and entertainment. I really enjoyed hearing each of your perspectives on the subject of political correctness and what effect it is having on the movie business. Best always, and thanks for another awesome episode. Thank you, thank you. Sleep with the light on says, what are the chances of getting Tobias Forge on the show? You could rank all the movies Ghost has paid homage to in albums and t-shirt artwork. I bet those chances are slim. Thanks again, guys, for being so awesome. I don't know why you'd say the chances are slim. I mean, you know, <clears throat> Ye of little faith. I don't know Tobias but I was kind of getting to know him before Ghost blew up because I was really into the band before they got really big and was going to a lot of their shows and kind of got friendly with their tour manager and uh, went backstage and met Tobias a few times. Um, and I also actually interviewed him via phone for Whorehound. So it was a written article interview, but uh, I do I do have it recorded because obviously i chatted with him about all things horror for like an hour and yeah he's he's a big horror nerd and i would think if i could get to him at this point because i know he's like a big deal now um he would be down i just don't know how to contact him without having to probably go through the hoops so 
but you know, I think if I could get to him and I reminded it of who I am and what everything, he'd probably, oh yeah, sure, he'd probably be into it. But who knows? Maybe one of my rock star buddies knows him. I can see. You know, maybe we'll find out. Steve Wade said, "Sean and Chris, have you ever seen phenomena, sometimes called creepers?" Oh, uh, Jennifer Conley from 1985 it's a dario argento film with jennifer conley <laughs> so i guess i should have kept reading um donald pleasance with his sidekick monkey and maggot boy and a rock and soundtrack with iron maiden and motorhead it's cheesy at moments but the gore gags are pretty good you always hear about suspiria but i think this is a hidden gem keep up the work hidden gem keep up the work keep up the good work sorry um i've seen it i i don't it, it's one of those uh, most argento to be honest with you i kind of watch it i go ah, yeah i mean i'm not a big italian horror fan to begin with i like suspiria i like deep red um some of his stuff like four flies on gray velvet is is pretty good but I, I don't really feel like italian films for me have a lot of replay value mm. i don't know i've not I never that. been a huge fulci fan i mean mm. i like zombie right I don't know. Thoughts? Creepers? Uh, I remember, I don't remember it that well. I remember seeing it and was like, kind of similar to you. I'm like, yeah, hey, it was fun. No. Then you're like, meh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I, I'll the, revisit it. I wouldn't mind rewatching that. I think one of the reasons I'm not a big Italian horror fan is I'm not a big gore fan. And right. I, I, I like gore and horror films when it's fun gore. I don't like gore that's trying to gross you out gore. Right. And I kind of feel like Italian films do that. Like they try to gross you out. Yeah. They're very wet. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like the eyeball scene in zombie, you know, right. it's yeah. like, ah, I don't want to see that. Rise Wilson said, Hey, Sean and Chris, when you guys mentioned the Jim Belushi, Dan Aykroyd movie neighbors, I think you meant John, sir. John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd movie neighbors. A fair few episodes back, I sought it out and watched it for the first time and loved it. Makes for a great double feature with the Burbs. Also, Chris, do you have any crazy Steve Johnson stories? I recently <laughs> read his book, Rubberhead, and it sounds like he's had quite a wild life. Indeed. Well, I'm glad you watched Neighbors. That's awesome because I like that movie a lot. And it is a... It, that is a good double feature with the burbs, actually. Um, yeah. I could see why you'd, you'd pair those up. Yeah. Um, uh, and Steve John, yeah, I have a shit ton of Steve Johnson stories. <laughs> I have lots and lots and lots, but you know, and I'll let him tell those because they get Steve Johnson stories are interesting because they always get bastardized so much. They get, it's very much like the Bible. They, uh, they get translated and become, uh, larger than life and when in actuality the original story was like mm, and then he paid a guy to take his clothes off and change a light bulb but you know and but then it, it becomes something much grander but no i got a lot of really good stories a lot of really good <laughs> stories and and there are many people that have way better stories than me yeah he's 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 quite the eccentric guy to work for and those were different times so I think you so, told yeah. me. I think you told me my favorite Steve Johnson story so far. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and I've I heard, can't. I've heard plenty. Um, yeah, I'll let, I'll let him put his books out and let him tell. Although a lot of them won't be in there, but uh, you know, I, I, you know, if you caught me at a party and we're having drinks and stuff, I'd probably share some. But I'm not going to do it on this. <laughs> And well, you know, the funny thing is, I don't think Steve cares. In fact, I, I think, think he, he I think he likes that shit yeah. out there. He yeah. seems to really kind of thrive on yeah. the I was doing tons of drugs and fucking yeah. everybody and blah blah blah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, he re he definitely relishes in it for sure. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, that's cool. You know, hey, yeah, whatever. No, it's great. I don't know. I mean, I would I could tell stories, but I don't know, man. Um, at this point now, they're kind of eh, meh, like who cares at this point, but no. I'll, I'll tell some, uh, I, not right now, but I'll, you know what, I'll, I'll throw a couple gems out there in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Lighton said, 
Hey guys, congrats on making 10,000 followers. Just heard on the news here in the UK that COVID has spiked in LA. Hope you guys are staying safe and that this vaccine is going to be rolled out soon. Uh, thank you for reading out my movie plot holes last time. So I just have two more. How did the T-Rex get into the visitor center in Jurassic Park? The building is not damaged in any way. True. And the last is in Terminator. Why does Arnie kill the wrong Sarah Connors? Skynet is capable of time travel and all the human experiences available online. They must know what she looks like. Best two movie soundtracks for me, Return of the Living Dead and Trick or Treat. Stay safe, stay spooky. And the surname is pronounced Layton. So Mike Layton, my bad. I said Layton. In a bit. I guess I should have read that last part first. That's Mike Lighton, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I don't know. That's I don't know. know. Maybe there's a bay door that's open in the back of the of the uh, visitor center that uh, they just didn't want to show. You know, maybe there's a big bay shipping door that he got into. I don't know, yeah. man. I don't care. And um, maybe when Arnie got the wrong Sarah Connor, he just didn't like her face. Yeah, I think he was just covering the bases, just kill everybody. Yeah. Just kill everybody. Uh, Reebcram. Reebcram said, Fred Decker's such a good guy. I feel for him that his movies weren't bigger in the box office. Wish him all the best with his future projects. Night of the Creeps is amazing. I'd love to see more horror with its EC comic style of humor and horror. Keep up the great work, gents. I agree. Yeah. Jackhammer. Sounds like a porn star. The jackhammer, yeah. <laughs> Glad you guys are back. Sad last week with no show. That's kind of my fault. I got busy. I've been working on some horse hog ground stuff. We had Thanksgiving. Sorry. Sometimes um, parents need a break. Yeah. Like the Reg Man says, it gets hard on the road. You know? That's right, man. That's right. Man. Um, love seeing Christopher meet someone he admires. Uh, to unplateau viewers, my choice would be perhaps adding Elvira. A lot of people, well, whew, ooh, that was a bad burp. That was one of those burps <laughs> that like went up my nose and suddenly my eyes are watering. Woo. Um, <laughs> yeah. Would you eat an onion? No, I didn't have any. Uh, it was a, no, Diet Coke. I just had like yeah. a, a soda burp uh, that just went nuts. Uh, um, I think it was kind of, I tried not to burp while I was burping. So I didn't right. burp on the show, and then it turned yeah. into a lot more than it could have right. been. It yeah. imploded and became a whole thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of people recommending Elvira. Um, to be on the show? Yeah. Um, I mean... Yeah, I love I, Elvira. I'd I love her, her too, and I know her. I just don't... I don't I don't know. It's. Uh, I, yeah, I guess I, I, I could reach out. I could reach out. I mean, we again, we still have a good... A uh, list of people that we've already t committed to that we're we're still trying to get to. So, um, but yes, she could be the maybe maybe the, when we when we catch up on guests when I'm in Australia and we do a show every day for 15 days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then then the tables will turn and I'll be the one sitting there going, uh, "How much longer we got, Chris?" Yeah. <laughs> Sean, a couple of years ago at a con in Calgary, Canada, I met you and Nick Castle. You guys were so laid back. It was a real pleasure. Maybe next time I can supply the Diet Coke. I work for them. Oh, well, just oh. send us a few cases, my friend. Yeah, um, I I'll offered, take some but, of that. I offered, but you were already well stocked. Before I left, you asked if I wanted a selfie and took the pic with my phone. So cool. Then gave me a horse all ground sticker. Would I be able to send that sticker back to you for an autograph when I wow. send for a new sticker? Love the shining slash day of the dead videos. Awesomely disturbing. Thanks and take care. Um, I mean, I have, I just, as I had pointed out earlier in the show, I just ordered new horse all ground stickers. So um, when I'm sending you, if you send me the self-addressed stamped envelope or whatever, if you just put a note in there that you want a signed sticker, no problem. Just let remind me. Not an issue. You don't have to send me the one you got. No worries. T. Heilman. T. Heilman. Um, so, <laughs> not touching that. That's his. That's his name. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not touching it. 
<laughs> there's, there's just going to be a like a picture of me and going like this yep. on the internet yep. with a yep. you know, totally pop, out of context final episode of podcast host <laughs> sean clark anti-semitic yeah um anyway uh no i'm not uh, i'm with uh t heilman said i'm with y'all on rocky horror don't get it i'll take phantom of the paradise over that any day i do agree yeah i'm with you. though i'm glad it doesn't suffer from rocky horror's overexposure in terms of midnight cult music-based films rock and roll high school and beyond the valley of the dolls are so much more fun for me and chris is correct plane trains and automobiles is hughes best hands down I like 16 Candles and Uncle, Uncle Buck, but they aren't even close. The teen-centered efforts don't resonate as much because they come from that entitled upper-middle-class perspective I find condescending. Ca uh, Candy's Del Griffith is the kind of guy I'd love to ha share a beer with, and I enjoy watching him take the piss out of Steve Martin's uptight suburban douche character. Wow. Um, you know, I... I, again, I need to revisit Plane, Trains, and Automobile and, uh, and Uncle Buck. I actually saw a clip from Uncle Buck popped up on something I was watching the other night, and I was laughing pretty hard at it, like, wow, I need to give this movie another shot. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I don't know why those, I'm going to give them another try. Although well, that movie, I, Uncle Buck didn't do well, and it yeah. didn't, wasn't received well. Yeah. And I only discovered it, <clears throat> I mean, I saw it when it came out, but I only discovered it later on. I, I, I was... I don't know. I, I just literally just much later sat down, watched it thoroughly and loved it so much and laughed so hard and just thought it was wonderful. So I, mm -hmm. I, I gained appreciate appreciation for it a little later. So. Yeah. And, and in reference to your comment about the, uh, the upper middle class perspective being condescending, <laughs> I mean, I related to the John Bender character in breakfast club. I related to the sort of outsider, sort of rebel, uh, you know, coming from not money sort of uh, perspective. So that's why Breakfast, I mean, I, I just love those films, even though they are seem to be, you know, with the exception of Pretty in Pink, she, her and Ducky, you know, were poor. I mean, and they, you know, but uh, I, I see what you're saying. I get it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's a complaint from a lot of people, actually. Yeah. E.L. Vetter uh, has another comment and said, uh, oh, he said, please make sure the shirts can ship to Europe or worldwide via PayPal. I definitely purchased some merch. Hell yeah. And uh, Paz Nicholson said, yeah, same here. I've bought from Gutter Garbs before, though, who Sean's talking to, and I'm from the UK. I just sent them a message to say it's a gift on packaging so I don't get taxed again, and they did. They seem like pretty cool guys, so... It sounds like Gutter Garbs does ship to the UK, so you guys should be fine. Because I know we have a lot of blokes out there that want to Dude. wear thing with two heads t-shirts. Yeah. Real horror show. All right. Hungry wives. Oh. He said, I'm excited to hear about a possible deal with Gutter Garbs, and I hope it works out. They put out high-quality product. I bought an HHG shirt from Horror Hound, and it was not a good look for me. I wear a large, or at least I did before the pandemic. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Uh, so I thought it was good, but they use those Gildan heavy cotton shirts that are tight in the torso, but with really baggy sleeves. I guess they're made for skinny guys with big biceps. I don't know. But you have my money for whatever thing with two heads or horse hog ground shirts you put out. Oh, and by far the two best get off my lawns yet. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of those Gildan shirts either. Uh, again, I don't wear my own shirts, so I didn't really have a problem with them putting them on those shirts. I'm not going to, the guy that walks around wearing the shirt of his band or whatever. So, right. um, and it's not, you know, it's not the shirt that makes you look fat. It's the fat. Yeah, the fat does is a problem. So you really can't blame the fat on the shirt. No. You know? <laughs> but i am with you a lot of I shirts now are like the slim cut freaking paper thin t-shirt that's supposed to be like the shirt that you've worn forever it's like that's horseshit i love I those though shirt. but i have to be in shape to love those 
when well, I'm fat, does. like right yeah, now, no. I don't love those shirts. Those aren't for those aren't for regular Joes, you know, like us. Like Can me. you see that? Was it, is that Nick Castle? <laughs> Nick Castle, <laughs> back on the show again. He just can't get enough of Sean, man. Fear the Juggalo said, "Hey guys." Just wanted to apologize to Chris for busting his for busting his chops. I'm open to being ripped on constantly. Just look at my name. True, true. It's true. Um, but I believe Mickey's Halloween haunt was done in 1995. And yes, there were live pirates all over Pirates of the Caribbean and ghosts and ghouls and actors in the suits of armor and Haunted Mansion. I was told by a longtime Disney cast member that they are not allowed to talk about it at all. So I guess it will sit under the rug with Song of the South. Also, Devil Times Five is one of Tarantino's favorite movies. Okay. Um, you know, it's funny. I did some research on that Halloween haunt thing at Disney. And I couldn't find anything on it. But I do <laughs> remember somebody telling me about them having a live actor in that suit of armor right by the, the never-ending hallway. Mm -hmm. Um that he would jump out at you'd stand there and, oh, and wow. that would freak me out. Um, but somebody had told me about that happening. So, hmm. so they're trying to wipe it off the face of history. Yeah. Kind of like that. Disney. First, that first uh, universal horror nights where the, the guy got killed and they kind of want to pretend it never happened. Jeez. So, yeah. Um, Patrick ring said, Sean, how should we send our address? If we contributed for the stickers, Instagram, Facebook? Yes. Um, just send me a private message on Instagram. If you haven't already, I've received a few from people. Uh, EL vetter. Yes. Uh, my EL vetter sent a few messages. He sent a, a lot coming in. He's got a lot of, he's, he's, he's a curious, curious cat. Like he watches the episode, he writes a thing, then he goes away, yeah. then he comes back and goes, oh, and another thing. And then he thinks about yeah. it some more. He's taking a shit. Yeah. It's on the toilet. Oh, yeah. I want to say this. Um, he said, yes, yes, hooray, a new episode. And I agree with Christopher. People should grow the bleep up. And Christopher, please do not stop these fantastic podcast episodes together with Sean. You can only stop it if everybody is cured and COVID-19 is just a bad memory in the past. Okay? High five to you all. No, even then you can't stop. Cause we're going to beat this shit and you know, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And um, then you'll have Sean and I in the same room together. Probably not. Probably not. Although we should try that and see how it goes and see how much of a car wreck that would be mm. Mm. or not. Sexy time. Eighties monster kid guys. I noticed you both disagreed on which werewolf transformation was better. It seemed like Chris was more for team howling and Sean was on Team American War from London. Uh -oh. Christopher, can you explain why you like the Howling transformation better? And Sean, can you explain why you liked American War from London's transformation better? I always have this debate with my fellow horror nerds. Cheers, guys. <laughs> I never said I liked one better than the other. I just, I, I think they're both great. They're apples. I actually find them slightly apples and oranges a little bit. Um, I like them both. Let me go on record and say I love them both. They're both masterful. Um, you know, the Rick Baker one is very clean, very precise, very, um, you know, very obviously incredibly well done. History making. And I like the roughness and the darkness and the more painful version of the Howling one, I think is a little disturbing because of the context of the guy turning into the werewolf and stuff so they're 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 just different i like them both very much first off the howling transformation wakes takes way too long as i said before it's like you know she could have left the room walked home been fine but by the time he changed the american werewolf in london one you don't have the person sitting there watching you transform the whole time going oh so there's that aspect and the fact that it's all in natural light. It's just, it's, I think is just so much more, you know, he took it to the next level mm -hmm. and there's just so much more going on there with the animatronics of the, the, the head coming out, not, you know, mm -hmm. where I think a lot of boteens on that was just a lot of bladders and yeah, but the budget difference on those two movies are, are incredible. Hey, not my problem, bro. You're asking me which one I like better. 
I like the one that costs more. Boom. All right. It's like, yeah, okay. It's like, what do you like? Do you like the the Datsun or do you like the Lamborghini? Which one do you like better? I like the Lamborghini. I'll take the Lamborghini. Oh, you like it because it costs more. Yeah. Um, Anyway. That's one way of looking at it. I don't know. (laughs) So I think that, you know, Rob Bottin's transformation is the Datsun of horror. Anybody remember Dotson's? That just went on record, everybody. Yeah. And what's he going to do about it? He's hiding. He's. Not, I would hope he would come out just to He's tell around. me to go fuck off. He's, right? around. He's around every corner. He's around there. He's going to come. I would love you. to to just sit down and bullshit with him for a while. Just. Talk. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? It'd be amazing. 80s Monster Kid also said, uh, great interview. Fred Decker seems like an awesome guy. It's all for you, demon. Oh, yeah. First off, thank you guys for doing cool stuff for us, stickers, contests, etc. That is far beyond cool of you and not needed. I know. As a KISS fan, the <laughs> offer to do the KISS makeup contest was amazing and appreciated. On right. behalf of the KISS fandom, he's speaking for all KISS fandom here, okay. I apologize for the lack of response. <laughs> Lastly, come on. If not enough participants enter... You have got to give it to the eight-year-old fan and her Skyer Tigris, Sky Skyer Tigris, whatever the hell it was drawing. How freaking adorable was that? There is hope in the world. Great episode, guys. Take care. Be safe. That was adorable. It was. And she does deserve to win. She does. I think. If there was a contest, she would win it. She would win it, yeah. But since we ended it, because it was just... Nobody church. gave a shit about that one. I was, I thought that one was going to go over well. I thought that was going to be like. I was even I, thinking of doing my own. You know. I but, know. I thought all our pals out there, all our friends out there, would be chiming in. But we got no, no friends. We got. We no got friends. nothing. No friends. Nope. No all love. Right. Jordan Moran said another class episode. Were you guys fans of? Starvengers slash Getter Robot G. It was a crazy giant robot cartoon, badly dubbed, and one of the bad guys looked like Hitler with horns coming out of his head. Absolutely amazing. I had a VHS as a kid, and it went missing, and I can't find it anywhere to buy anymore. Now, isn't that... I'm pretty sure that that was uh, Shogun Warriors uh, in the U.S. I believe that's what... Uh, I'm I'm almost sure. I think I even looked it up to see what he was talking about. Yeah, because I, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I think in the U.S. it was called Force Five, um, oh, which Force was the was Shogun Warriors. Right. It's the Shogun yeah. Warriors, which I'm a huge Shogun Warriors fan. Yeah. So yeah, I used yeah. to watch Force Five when I was a kid. I used to love yeah. the cartoon. Um, so maybe look up Force Five, and I think it's the same thing you're looking for. Hmm. I'm gonna go have dinner that my lovely girlfriend made and is waiting what are you having uh, i don't know i have to go see what she's made oh that was and, a good one do you hear that oh my yes i did <laughs> that chair that was, needs some oil that was chair legit needs some oil. that was legit i was i pulled the giuliani right there yeah you did yeah now, if only my <laughs> hair dye was dripping that'd be the full month well it kind of is is it you okay that's it for the questions now we're going in to the ranking which one did i pick for number four? Oh. The, the expectations. Oh my God! The anticipation. Here it comes. Get ready. The rest of the Elm Streets, right now. All right. So my number four. Um. 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 This is the one I'm probably gonna get a little beat up on by by the fans. Who knows? I don't know. But after watching <laughs> all of these movies in three nights, I've I've watched all of them. Wow. Yeah. Uh. This is just a better movie. And honestly, when I saw it in the theater, I was, I've only seen it once. I only saw it in the theater, never revisited it until now. And I got to say, watching it in order, this was a far better film than all these other ones, in my opinion. The remake, Mm. Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's and, the and look we always why. one of us is always going to get that yeah. look during these things <laughs> and i will tell you why because it's not silly there's no jokes 
it's mm-hmm. and it's going back to that part one style freddy that's dirty mean and evil mm-hmm. and it's got some great gags in it i mean yeah it's a sort of a greatest hit of the first film and they up you know did their own interpretation of a lot of the gags and yeah it's got the beautiful cast which is a little over the top you know everybody's a good looking teen but it's a really mean spirited dirty it, it, it's and it's well acted it mm-hmm. it looks good all the effects look good there's no crappy effects in the entire thing like there's some great get like that that gag when she's crawling on the floor in the drugstore and it's kind of flashing between the boiler room it keeps going back but that's it's that's a really cool gag you know mm-hmm. like she's in the boiler room mm-hmm. she's in the drugstore and she's backing up and he's there he's not there um their their recreation of uh of tina's death was pretty cool too the way they did that of her slamming mm-hmm. on the ceiling and the wall and Jack Earl Haley's great. I mean, he's a fucking amazing actor, you know, Academy mm-hmm. Award. Not, did he win for Little Children? He was nominated. I don't remember if he won. He was nominated. nominated. Um, yeah. The only, my only criticism of that film was the fact that they made, because they went for it, where part one shied away from really saying he was a child molester. They mm-hmm. went for the child molester angle in this one. But the problem is they made the non-burned Freddy really sympathetic, which I didn't think played well with this evil Freddy that's coming after the kids. And that's what I didn't think worked. If well, they, they made him a victim. That's why I a, remember that one. Yeah. They, they were like, they flip flopped through that movie. Didn't they go, was he a child molester? Was he falsely yeah. accused? And then at was the end you a, find out he really did do it, but, but that's, but, but also they made too, him all sympathetic and kind of small and, uh, I'm but they sorry, also you know? skated around. Was he a child murderer or was he a child molester? They, 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 well, he wasn't a murderer. Because he didn't kill any of the kids, he just he was just taking pictures of them and touching. Right, them. but yeah. they they were like they couldn't commit to that. That's one of my biggest problems with that movie. It's like, yeah. well, what the fuck is he then? I don't know what. It, and, and then I'm supposed to feel sorry for him. And then when he's killing, killing, like. Well, but anyway, go ahead. That's when you a good watch point. the movie, uh, you know, because I, I like you do, Chris. I know you watch these movies thinking of a technical, like how they did things and what they were doing with putting the movie together you can tell there's pieces missing and pieces rearranged. Uh, Mm. I would love to see what the original vision of that film is because it feels like it's, and I remember when it was being made, there was a lot of talks of reshoots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So, uh, you know, that's the problem when you get into a a franchise like that, you know, I know Rob dealt with it in the Halloween franchise. You get too many cooks in the kitchen and everybody has an opinion and I own this character and this is what I want you to do with it. And I know Bob Shea is notorious for not being easy to work with. Um, I I have a feeling that director had a lot of challenges and Hmm. I don't know at the end of the day, you, you compare it to, the other sequels, they just get so cornball. At least this was a solid movie trying to be serious, you know? Right, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. there's my number four. Number five, I'm going with, again, I'm flip-flopping. But because at this point, I'm going to go on record, and I've said this a thousand <laughs> times, and Sean knows exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah. After a certain while, it, all becomes, it comes gar- goulash. I don't, <laughs> like, I start going... I what the fuck happened in that one? There's a kid. Which nun? Which one was the nun? And then the fucking thing and the arms come out and there's faces in his chest. And what is that? And like, I'm always like, I don't know what the fuck. Who's going what? It's a child. It's a master. Is it a warrior? What's going on? <laughs> um, so that's, that's my thought. So that being said, part my my number five is part four, Dream Master. That's, 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 my, that's my number five. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I think because that was the Rennie Harlan one, right? Mm-hmm. And again, I, I at this point I'm like they're all like meh. Um, Rennie Harlan. There were some some interesting things in that one. Um, was that the one where the dog pisses on him and resurrects him? Which which is that one? Unfortunately, that yeah. Order. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> See, there you go. Like right there, I'm going. What they brought him back? The dog pees on him, and that's how they brought him back. What the fuck? I don't remember it all that well. I re- I watched it recently, and I was just like, holy shit. But um, yeah, that's my number five. That's all I got to say about that one. Okay. 
Matt? <laughs> my, my number five is number four as well. And um, here's my number four story. I, and I, I woke up thinking about this guy this morning <laughs> and, and I wrote him on Instagram. So there was a radio DJ in Houston where I grew up um, on a pop station and he used to, every week they'd have a movie premiere, you know, whatever was coming out, they'd do a screening. And I did call or 10 gets tickets. So I would call in every time they'd give tickets away and I never won. I think I won once, but I'd keep calling anyway until I'd get the DJ on the phone. His name was Mark Walden. And I'd, I, and I'd asked to speak for him by name. And I was, you know, I was a kid and I'd, and I'd be like, Hey, I was trying to win the movie tickets, but I didn't win. So can you give me tickets anyway? And he always would. Wow. He gave me tickets like every week to go see movies. And one week it was when part four came out and they did a marathon where they played all three movies and then they played part four, like, you know, 10 o'clock. And I, my dad dropped me off. So I watched, finally got to see one through three in the theater and then four and right age, right time. And, and again, it, no Patricia Arquette, but like it had just about everything I wanted. Mm-hmm. It was a colorful movie too. And I love just fantastic ideas of it were. I still love how the movie's lit and how the movie's shot and some of the photography in it. It just, from a pop art standpoint, I think it's a, a, I think it's a great looking movie. It's not my, hasn't held up as my favorite movie in the franchise or with stories or characters or anything like that. But purely from a romantic standpoint, I, I, I was right place, right time, right age for it. And I remember it came out on video around Christmas and I watched it. I remember, I remember just, it just being Christmas time and just watching it over and over and over and over and over and over. And just the scene with him on the beach, like all the stuff, even in the theater that I kind of thought was silly the first time I saw it, I just grew to love it. It just became one of those movies that I just watched to death and fell in love with. I think I have the, soundtrack on vinyl somewhere like i wound up with that like i just any vincent I yeah i was i think it was a, it was a good it was a good movie again it was it seemed like a movie aimed for a demographic and they kind of yeah. hit the vibe with me yeah absolutely it was popcorn it was it was, yeah, it was super 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 popcorn also too that was that the one or was it maybe i'm, I'm getting them wrong again it becomes goulash i love the idea that they that i don't feel they explored properly over the series the bastard son of a thousand maniacs i think is so fucking cool that well, the, they touch that, on that and they go five. into it that part was part five, five. Is when they when it was bastard son of a hundred maniacs but yeah hundred maniacs whatever yeah. the fuck it is but i love that idea like if i had an album i would call that my album that's what <laughs> the bastard son of a hundred maniacs but uh but it's uh, uh i love that see that's the kind of they always they always gave you a nugget in a movie in part four and part five is kind of like that they're terrible films but they always give you this really <laughs> cool nugget that you're going i want to see that one I want to see right. that movie. I want to see mm-hmm. that story. You know, like right. you always had a couple good hooks, but right. then, <laughs> but then the rest of the album sucks, and you're like, no. yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five is New Nightmare. Um, I think it was a great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, movie looks good. Uh, my issues with New Nightmare, I do not like the design of Freddy. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the trench coat was fine. It was mm. the the makeup and the glove. I just, mm. I thought they were they yeah. looked they looked too costume Clean. store like bought. You know, um, I what I would have loved to seen him do with this exact same idea, but have it based on what he based Freddy on, and have it right. be a different, you know, scarier, you know more realistic version of the what he saw as a kid or whatever you know something Mm -hmm. like that and you know this is this might get me in trouble here because i'm friends with heather langenkamp and miko hughes um heather's performance was not great in my opinion i didn't think she carried the movie that well acting wise um Mm -hmm. and miko did his job fine but he was so annoying in the movie uh, as her son, <laughs> the kid, I, 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 it's, I have a hard time, you know, it's, it's what ruined Babadook for me is annoying mm-hmm. kids. I, I just, 
<laughs> and sorry, Miko. I mean, he's a good friend, but you know, you did a great job, but the character annoyed me. And then some of the effects, I mean, some of the green screen stuff was terrible. Like them yeah. running across the freeway just looked yeah, so oh. bad. Oh, so that bad. I, you're right about that. I mean, so there, bad. there's yeah. some stuff like that, but, but it's a great idea. It's well-directed. It looks good. I just think it could have been better, but mind you, it was still better than four or five and six in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's a better movie yeah. in my opinion, because yeah. I, yeah. I ranked it higher. So that's my new nightmare rant there. So it's, <laughs> it's my number five. We're not all that, that far off. No, no. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> We're still going. All right. Who wants to go with number six? Matt. I think you're up. Well, if you haven't noticed, I got a I got a boring nostalgic story for each one. Um, no, this is what makes them great. You're, these are good stories. Yeah. My numbers, my number six stories, uh, no less boring. I had a um, I had a half sister that worked for a radio station in Denver. And when <laughs> they're all six, connected to radio stations. <laughs> they are. They are. Oddly <laughs> enough, they are. Um, I was obsessed with Alice Cooper. At, at, at a young age and Freddy Krueger. So when I heard that Freddy, that Freddy's dad was Alice Cooper, I was foaming at the mouth. Like, <laughs> Get me into this fucking movie, whatever you have to do. <laughs> and um, out of the blue one day, I got a package in the mail from a radio station in Denver. And in there was a pass to a screening of, of Nightmare Six, a cassette tape of the soundtrack, and a t-shirt that had this drawing of Freddie on the front. And it said on the back, I was first to see the last. So I wore that shirt to the screening of the movie. And I put the soundtrack in before I saw the movie. And I discovered some cool music that I didn't know bands I didn't know existed. So I kind of went into it a little loaded mm. and like kind of expecting more. So this is what and, you're getting at is this is how you discovered the fat boys. This is how, <laughs> <laughs> and this is how I joined. The fat boys. No, um, so I go see the movie and I was left with a little, I was left wanting more. I, I love, I saw Alice and, I thought Alice was a great cameo and a great casting decision. And there's moments and shots in the movie that I like a lot. I love, I actually, as silly as it is, I love the scene where he's driving the bus. They just, I don't know why, I just love, it's just silly. But I love it. <laughs> there's moments in the movie that I really liked a lot. And I love that they tried to give me this story. Mm -hmm. They wanted to show me young Freddie and, mm -hmm. and, tie all of these things and I, I loved the effort that they made but at that point I was starting to I was just old enough to start calling bullshit on some things mm -hmm. and I thought they I thought the 3d at the end as much again as much of I'm trying to be nice but as much of an effort as they made I thought <laughs> eh, the, when they, I was like this it can't end like this. yeah it can't end like this I left I remember leaving the theater thinking I want more and I hope there's more coming because I'm nowhere near satisfied with what I just got. So here's the funny thing about the soundtrack. The soundtrack had a, had a, little, a little band on it called the Goo Goo Dolls. Hmm. And the Goo Goo Dolls had three songs, I think, on that soundtrack. And they were a metal blade band at the time no one gave a shit about. And I got into them from that, from that soundtrack and became a huge fan. Hmm. And every time they'd come to Houston, they'd cancel because no one cared. And they didn't actually end up playing a show until a few years later. Um, and then about a year after that, they were a ginormous band and had a, a gigantic song. And everyone knew who they were. But that actually, that, that soundtrack was discovering that band, particularly of all music, influenced my guitar playing more than anybody aside from maybe Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Like mm -hmm. it had a prof that band, the Goo Goo Dolls actually had a profound influence on me musically. Their earlier records, their punk records. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was the right age for that stuff. 
And I kind of grew up with that band a little bit. And I wouldn't have discovered them at that time had I not been a Nightmare on Elm Street fan. Mm-hmm. And, and I wouldn't be mentioning this if it didn't have such a profound impact on my guitar playing because it, it really affected me greatly. Mm-hmm. And that's my takeaway from part six. <laughs> and I've romanticized <laughs> whatever I've got left of it because of that. Right. And Alice, obviously. But yeah. uh, not my favorite, not my favorite movie. But I appreciate it. <laughs> but you have a lot of sentimental attachment to it. A lot. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, the, uh, there has to be <laughs> sentimental attachment <laughs> to, to rank it so high. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Number six, I'm going with uh, flip flop between six and seven. Um, um, number six, I'm going with part five, The Dream Child. Mm. Um, only because there's some cool gags in it and stuff like that that some friends of mine did and things like that. I thought um, it tried to be a little darker, tried to get a little bit away from the the shtick. It tried to, it didn't, but it... Eh, well, it compared to... to <laughs> compared to what? Um, the dream job. Compared to terrible. part six? Part six is like... Well, they're all pretty bad, but anyway. We, that's what I'm saying. It's all goulash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd say Dream Child is my part. I don't have much to say about that one, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. But All right. My part six. So I feel like you guys are definitely pulling a lot more nostalgia than I am, but uh, having watched these with fresh eyes, I'm going Freddy versus Jason. Mm. Because not because it's a great movie, but all the gags look good. Freddie's makeup looks pretty good compared to four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just a fun throwback to like King Kong versus Godzilla, watching the big monsters fight. There's Mm -hmm. no story really. I mean, there actually is more of a story than I would expect, you know, have the whole the whole reason Freddie's using Jason and um but it's just a fun beat em up fight. John Wick meets horror. You know, it's totally, it, yeah. It's just hmm. beating the shit out of each other for an hour and a half, and it, it's fun. It's a fun movie. It looks good. The gags all work. There's nothing. That, I mean, there's some cornball stuff in it, but it, but it's totally not taking itself seriously. And and that's the thing. You know, we had gotten to the point where we'd let that go. We're not, you know, Freddie's not scary anymore. He's a comedian, right. you know? That's true. Yeah. And, and at least Jason was as the character was grounded as Jason. It was almost like he was in this stupid movie, you know? Right. Freddie versus Jason. That's my number six. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Who wants to go with seven? I'll go. Fuck it. Remake I, is my number seven. All right. Wow. <laughs> Remake is my number seven. And again, this is all just going to get into the goulash area and also what I wanted it to be. How do you fuck that up? How do you fuck up a remake so many years later? I think I, I think it's, you know, the too many cooks in the kitchen is what fucked it, it up. Absolutely. And it's also Platinum Dunes. But I think yeah. also, like, as, as, as far as a quality of film cinema goes, it's better than most of them as far as lighting and camera work and you know uh costume acting all that stuff i thought jackie earl haley was fucking great i loved him in that role i thought he was he was the only guy on this planet other than england that you could get or should get to play that role i think he's fantastic i thought the makeup looked great all that stuff my issue was is it didn't know what movie it wanted to be and that pissed me off so hard i was just like how do you make a remake of a horror slasher film technically and not know that you're making a remake of a horror slasher film and not commit to it? Like it bugged me so bad. It it was the epitome of you pussed out. Like you just didn't want to quite go all the way. You wanted to try to maybe have it appeal to everybody. They just didn't commit. And that bothered me. And it bothered me that at that time you could have made it so dark and so weird and come up with new inventive dream like things instead of rehashing the original. Like I, I just, it just, it was it to me just a ginormous missed opportunity. 
that that was my. I, I but also there think, are things I liked about it. So I also think the other big mistake on it was the makeup design. They went mm. too realistic, burn where they mm. should have went a little more stylized, almost maybe mm. like Cropsy from the Burning, with that had more of a scary look to it. Mm. He didn't look mm. scary; he just looked burned. Well, I saw a version you know? of that makeup that and that was realistic based, but much more disfigured. Yeah, and they toned it down. But I still think I still like it. I like the idea of a realistic burn. Otherwise, if you're not going to do that, I would go like. What was the character that that uh, Gary Oldman played in one of the Hannibal oh, Mason movies? Verger? Like I would yeah. go that far, like yeah. that. I'd be like, "Fuck me!" Like that's we're just going shit. You, can, I can't even look at him. Yeah. No, you know, it's like, but uh, but anyway, that's that's my number seven. My number seven is Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, hmm. I had high hopes. I was waiting for that, just like <laughs> everybody was. You know, the movie that you never you were never going to see. I remember going to see it with my band at the time and um, Friday night, Arclight. And I had never seen a theater react to a film like that. Like Arclight Hollywood was lit up. <laughs> People were standing up, yelling at the screen, telling everyone in that movie what to do. And I, I don't think I've seen a reaction, particularly in Hollywood, where you have serious movie watchers. You know, you go to the dome to see a movie, you shut the fuck up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen, I had, to this day, I've never seen a reaction from a film opening night like I saw with that. I mean, it was like a Tyson fight. The, the energy in the room, they were just waiting for the first punch. And that was such a cool event of a film to witness in your lifetime having been a fan of friday the 13th movies and nightmare on elm street movies you know for your childhood and adolescence to see in this i mean that was our frankenstein meets the wolf man hmm. that may be the only one we get like that you know in our lifetime and i loved how stylized it was i loved uh, there's i again i loved the photography in the movie uh it just was so, to your point earlier, Sean, about how we had already accepted at that point that Freddie was this, Freddie was Hollywood Squares guest, no. you know, nothing was shocking. I loved how he, Ronnie tried this, particularly the scene when they're in the cabin and everything's on fire and they're really facing off. I thought there was so much thought about how those two would be seen on the screen together that has held up. Like we, all of us can kind of look back on that movie now, whether you like it or not and go, it was executed as well as it could have been from where we were at. We weren't going to make a serious Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And to your point also about Friday the 13th movies, those had fallen into the gutter at that point. He'd gone to fucking space and it was a worm and <laughs> all bets were off. You know, what, are we, what are we getting this time? I forgot he was a worm. That's right. Remember, remember, remember when he was a worm? Uh, so to see him, to see him in the cornfield, just like killing kids, like that scene always stuck out to me. That's when, like, that was the first time in a long time where I, I was like, "Wow, Jason's a scary motherfucker right now." Yeah. Like, and it was it was in fleeting moments in that movie because there's so much just bullshit you know, with some of the, 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 the effects and the dream sequences and some of it just it gets a little too much for me. Mm. But man, I appreciated having a Frankenstein meets the Wolfman in my lifetime that I could rally around and be excited about. And, sounds you know, like it should have ranked higher on your list. Sounds like. It, it may, maybe it could have, maybe it could have. It just, I just, I've, I've probably, I can probably say I've seen that movie less than 10 times since it came out and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, and that's a lot yeah, right. for me. Uh, <clears throat> it's not, it, not my favorite, but again, I appreciated the effort and I had waited for it so long. I tried to find something in it that I was going right. to take out of it. Gotcha. So my number seven is the dream master. Wow. And I think it's a terrible movie. Um, I was very bitter that Patricia Arquette was not in it. And mm -hmm. It took me years to figure out that was supposed to be Patricia Arquette. I didn't realize that. I'm like, wait a second. Because I was just like, who's this girl? 
it was kind of like the uh, when they replaced Daniel Harris in Halloween Six. It took me forever right. to figure that out. I was like, oh, that's supposed to be the same person. Um, right. Because uh, no offense, but she does not look anything like Patricia Arquette. <laughs> and and again, I had such a crush on her. I was like, oh man, at least we got true romance. You know, that's the yeah. right. <laughs> you know. So I only put probably Dream Master above of the the other last two because of the cockroach sequence that sequence is awesome um the stuff screaming mad george did that oh, that is a real it just the the whole the arms breaking and the I it's mean, nuts yeah yeah, yeah yeah that is a great sequence um yeah. and it's very disturbing and mm -hmm. just you know when he crushes the box and yeah you know, and the goo mm -hmm. comes out it, that scene alone pushes it up higher than the other two for me but otherwise it's just, it's just a lot of that's when freddy's makeup it's getting even more toned down and it's looking more like a rubber mask um there's some things i liked in it i like the whole little karate thing you know with him and the dojo but then <laughs> you know but where they didn't have enough money to fucking shoot a real i know it's, yeah it's 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 that's just weird yeah he's, he's like fighting nobody um, yeah <laughs> but uh yeah um you really it. you really feel disappointed right now that <laughs> I can that feel one, it. I can that feel one it. sucked the life out of you that one. yeah you're like <laughs> wait my last that. two <laughs> like, i held back on part four i was nice about yeah that was the other thing i was a little disappointed about part four is how they just wrote off kincaid and the other kids so quick although his death mm -hmm. scene the whole thing in the waterbed was kind of cool oh yeah uh, especially how the mom pulls the sheets back and he's under it you know that is totally. it was kind of neat that also was, you know none of us have brought up the coolest fucking actor in all these movies john fucking saxon yeah you know, thank you yeah. who you know i was a huge john saxon fan yeah, uh, and, me too. And anytime he was on screen in any of these movies, I was like, it was John Saxon time. <laughs> you know, so. Instant legitimacy whenever yeah. he showed up. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, but All then right. he, he shows up to, I mean, they kind of made him like this pussy. You know, they he's he's trying to run away the whole time, yeah. you know, and like, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then the dog. What is going the dog on with the light on me? I don't know. <laughs> the, the that's dog, the sun. That's the sun? Okay. That's the sun. Okay. The dog pissing. And bringing Freddie back, yeah, that was that was cornball as hell. But Ooh. anyway, uh, right. we only have two more guys, two so, more each, right? So, yeah. So obviously, when you give up your your number eight, you're giving up your number nine. So yeah, who, two more left. Who wants to who wants to reveal their final two? <laughs> so we'll, we'll we won't get into our last picks, but obviously everybody will know what they are because we want to go in order, but. Who wants to go? You want me to go first? I'll go. Here, you go. Okay. You go ahead. So my number eight is Dream Child. Uh, it, man, it's bad. Um, and that is for whatever reason, what happened with Freddie's makeup in, in the Dream Child? It suddenly looks like he has no, like his chin seems to be almost like pushing up towards his nose, like it's it almost looks like a grandpa makeup it's weird it, it just yeah. looks bad it's very like muted and yeah. there's no color to it and it's and oh my god it's just such a bad movie and then like the <laughs> you know fucking freddy in a wetsuit and <laughs> and 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 like they suddenly turn the hospital into this castle this really shitty map painting of the, you know, it's like, we've always oh, yeah. seen what the hospital looks like. Why do, why do you have to suddenly make it look like a Gothic castle? It's, it's just, just silly shit. Um, I do like the, I do like the effect of uh, the boyfriend who gets turned into the sort of the monster, the robot motorcycle guy kind of, that's yeah. kind of a cool yeah. makeup. Well, the makeup effects on the model girl getting her face stuffed looks terrible. Yeah. That yeah. whole thing yeah. with the cheat. I mean. That might well, be the. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, keep in mind when it comes to makeup effects and the Freddy makeup, as it got later, he wanted the time cut down. You know, Robert Englund didn't want to sit in the chair as long. It was in yeah. his contract. He was like, 
okay, I'll do another one, but you're paying me this much and I don't want to be in that chair longer than an hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. So then the makeup people are like going, okay, we have to figure out a quick way of doing this quicker way. And also too, he would, if you notice in a lot of the movies, they stopped bringing the makeup up to his eyes a lot. And yeah. it would be like really like <laughs> open the eyes and it'd be burn, 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 kind of smooth Halloween mask looking and then nothing. Yeah. And same with the mouth because he didn't want that makeup. He didn't want to sit through the makeup anymore and he didn't want it near his eyes. And, you know, he wanted to be able to do fucking lines of blow. So he didn't <laughs> cover his mouth, you know, and stuff like that. So, and, and, you know, so that, 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 that's, that's why it changed all the time. And then it also got so like, it started to get so MTV, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. they literally oh, remade yeah. the take on me video with the one kid, you know, yeah. with the, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, you know, and, and like, how can we get around doing a cool death? Oh, we'll just cut him like a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean it's it's because the director was a comic book artist and he oh, was he had to have that he was he was a comic book artist and he had to have a, that gag in it you know so and then super freddy come on <laughs> i mean michael bailey smith's a good friend of mine but super yeah. freddy is just yeah. fucking cornball yeah. uh um yeah it, it's it's just bad it's just yeah. got and 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 then the little kid that plays Jacob, he's terrible. And then, you know, like when they have the Freddy makeup on him, he's all show me, you know, and he's got, you know, <laughs> so, and, and he's there the kid go. from the fucking lay it down video from rat, <laughs> Remember oh, the is rat he? video. Oh, oh no. my God. That's right. He's the kid oh my going. God. Oh and, my God. Wow. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's my that's my number eight. Who wants to go next? That's your number eight. I'll go. Fuck it. Yeah. My number eight is Freddy versus Jason. That's my number eight. And I and I and I I was so monumentally disappointed by that movie. I, I can't even tell you how monumentally disappointed. I think it's because of what I thought it could have been. Mm -hmm. What I in my head had was very different. You know who did than, the effects the makeup on freddy versus jason um it was i believe it was a canadian uh, a friend of mine actually bill terazakis worked on it uh -huh. um because it, it was shot in Canada, vancouver i believe yeah so it was all canadian people so um uh and, but i it was just like again i always go back to the robbo what robbo team was going to do with that mm. script where Freddie wasn't burned yet and he was molesting Jason when he was a kid and all that. Like, I love that idea. Like, yeah, I'm that's like, cool. that, that's what, that's where my head goes, you yeah. know, when, and then when I saw the movie, I was like, it was too slick for me. I wanted like sackhead Jason versus part one, Freddie, you know, I, I just, I wanted it to be more old school vibe, like a Wolfman versus Frank. I wanted to go old school, you know, and kind of be, grittier and darker and rougher and more violent i thought the fight was so fucking disappointed i wanted it to be like and i hate to reference a movie i worked on but i wanted it to be like kill bill i wanted it to be so ridiculously over the top bloody to the point where blood is shooting everywhere and everyone's covered in blood and i was thinking arms get severed and regenerate and like i just had this so monumental fight that would just go on forever that yeah. you're just going oh my god it would just be relentless just pounding you in the face constantly again almost like a john wick type you watch a john wick movie he's fighting hundreds of people through the whole thing <laughs> and yeah. you're going there's no possible way this could and i that's what i wanted like i wanted it to be more like uh give me more give me more give me more. it was too yeah. slick too yeah. slick for me yeah. but uh anyway that's that's my number uh, number eight, Matt. Matt, my number eight's Dream Child. I just at the, I remember at even at the time just kind of being like, mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a perfect example of Hollywood high on its own fumes. Yeah, and just going. Everything goes, guys. Yeah. Everybody throw an idea in the hat, and we're going to pull them out of the hat, 
and there's no wrong answer. We can't mm -hmm. do anything wrong with Freddy. Everything's forgivable. Mm -hmm. Every character is great. Every gag is great. The makeup looks great. Everything's mm -hmm. fucking great. We're making a Nightmare on <laughs> Elm Street film, and that's fucking great. <laughs> and it wasn't. It so was, it was up its own ass and didn't deliver. It was complete up its own ass. It was yeah. the it, to me that was the top rung in the ladder of it being up its own ass. Mm. Like nobody to tell anyone no with anything. Mm -hmm. Like you've heard the stories about Freddy's dead and how they had to rework the ending and the how difficult the 3D was. And it, there was somebody in there going no. There was somebody even on part six going. Mm, mm, no how about it they're gonna get somebody to play his dad how about alice cooper like there was none of that shit in part five it just seemed like a bunch of art students just like jacking off on nightmare <laughs> yeah. it, just, it just didn't it, i don't know it, it at time time has not i don't think it's been very kind to mm. that, to that movie. so I, I echo a lot of what sean said about that all right so the final <laughs> number nine <laughs> we have all three different number nines i, I think so yeah wow yeah. This, that's impressive Ooh. i'll go first okay, so we can go, get it over with go for it my my number nine is part six final nightmare that's that's my i was just like even the poster for that movie was disappointed <laughs> i was like Jesus, the poster looks like shit. And then Freddy Krueger's makeup looks like shit. It's all soft and weird. It looked like a Halloween mask. Well, it's because they had that blend. they had that same artist do the first five posters, and they all had that yeah. same style of art. Yeah. And then suddenly yeah. it's this cheesy, just you know, three, yeah. like yeah. wannabe three. Just terrible. Yeah. And it was didn't that that was the one that has Roseanne in it, right? Yeah. And, and I was Tom like, Arnold. <laughs> And I was like, and Tom Arnold and Roseanne, what the fuck are you talking about? What am I watching right now? And then the 3D at the end, I was like, wait, I put the glass and the gimmick of the 3D. Like that movie, it's <laughs> fucking unwatchable. Like you're just going, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And the kid with the ears, right? And then his yep. ears get, I'm like going, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos, it, man, don't fuck with Carlos. He's a, <laughs> he's a wonderful guy but uh but uh i was just like holy shit this movie is so talk about buttermilk talk about you're just going what am i drinking right now I, this tastes terrible carlos it looks is a like nice milk, guy actually yeah. i hung out with that guy in london at a convention once he's a nice guy he was he was one he's of biff's nice. gang and uh yeah back to the back to the right. yeah yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's that's my last one. I don't have much more to say about it other than shit sandwich. <laughs> I'll, I'll go next because you are incorrect. We both have the same last one. Mine is also Freddy's Dead. Ah, yes, excellent. Yes, excellent. Um, my God, man! <laughs> what I first off, I'm Lisa Zane cannot act. She no. is she is zero. <laughs> emotion in that i mean she's like yeah she's like yeah. A, a blank just the whole movie um so, and she's like your lead uh the whole thing with breck and meyer the video game thing boing 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 bouncing around and oh. i was just like this really they sh they shot this somebody said yeah. this is a good idea okay yeah. Yeah. All right. Somebody went, oh yeah, nailed it. Yeah, somebody's like, <laughs> have you ever seen like the Road Runner and Bugs Bunny and yeah, let's uh, um, and they were really playing up the video game, the Power Glove. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh god. Isn't that the one where Freddy Krueger like he? It's very Warner Brothers cartoon where he pushes the bed of nails out onto the street, and then yeah. he looks into the camera and goes. Whew, and yeah. gets up and yeah. walks up and you're going, what the fuck? Am well, I how, let's not forget when he's falling in the house and he flies up on the broomstick and oh, I'll get oh your little God. soul too. That's right. Yeah. I was just oh. like, oh my God, what has happened to my Freddy Krueger? What has happened? <laughs> yeah, it was run amok. Run and then amok. the 3D was terrible. You yeah. know, everything yeah. was like, it was funny because nay walked in the room while i was watching that one and it was right when the 3d started and you know they're picking they're picking up every object and like huh hmm like that and she's just like and it's not in 3d because you know i'm watching it you know normal and the, and she's like 
looking at this going, man, this is awful. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, just so you know that this scene was in 3D. That's why everybody keeps doing this at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's bad. Wow. It was bad. And, and so Matt was your, what was your, your, your final? I, I'm already lost at this point. The remake. I, oh, uh, oh, wow. Okay. I just, I just, um, mm. <laughs> that's the best part of this <laughs> you know i got i got it i got i got what you guys said about it i got what you guys said about it and that's how i feel that's how i feel like we're on the cusp of something's about to get remade right something's gonna mm -hmm. happen and i wish and i'm like like both you guys we both have this wish let's send it out into the universe now that somebody calls us <laughs> and, and goes we're thinking about doing this. What <laughs> right. do you think? <laughs> we have all written that script in our heads mm -hmm. of, where, of where he should go. And I really wish someone would call me. Uh, but not <laughs> going to. We know there's talks that Robert might return for another film. There's been talks recently. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I Years ago, I figured out in my head, I figured out a way where I think it, I think it could work where I think he could come back and I think he could do something pretty fantastic. And I really hope that day happens. And as much as I- Why don't you won't write it? Why don't you write it? I, I have. I, oh, okay. To be honest with you, I have. I have. Um, I want to read I'm that. Sure, I have I'm, read sure I'm sure I'm one of 300 people in this town that have, <laughs> have tried to armchair quarterback Freddy Krueger into the future. The remake though, was the opportunity where somebody, somebody, somebody sat down like we're doing now and said, okay, you know, and I, and I was with, I, I saw little children when it came out and I thought Jackie Earl Haley was as good a pick as you could have done. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know how menacing he could be. I was hearing all the chit chat that I'm sure you guys were hearing in town while that movie was in production. And then about reshoots, which you mentioned earlier and, you know, you knew people that were involved and you'd hear, you're hearing stuff going, none of this sounds good. No. <laughs> like, Ooh, this may be a bleak fucking Christmas. And then when the movie came out <laughs> and I saw the movie, I was like, this is just completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like it, the effort and the money that went into platinum dunes up this fucking IP, it just didn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. You could have done it with an eighth of the budget and made it 50 times scarier mm -hmm. and with no stars. And if you wanted to find an unknown Jackie Earl Haley, that's got a fucking wild side that's going to scare the piss out of you. And if you're going to reinvent it from the ground floor up with all new people and a new, like, it, 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 it again it felt like hollywood kind of run amok like so, it, no disrespect to the director but be, he's done some incredible music videos i wasn't mm -hmm. quite sure what landed him the gig to remake that film mm -hmm. you know um mm -hmm. but somebody saw somebody saw something there that needed to that they wanted to see i don't know it just is it, it's I, unnecessary is the word that comes to mind well, don't you think it was it was very uh, around that time it was hollywood because they remade because platinum dunes did texas chainsaw and they did friday 13th and they yeah. they put it's a, everybody in it looked like an abercrombie and fitch model with low-rise jeans and bell bottoms and you're like what the fuck and and then uh it and it's hollywood's version of what ho horror at its core when it's the best is when it's independent it's lower budget there's nobody in it that you know you know, <laughs> so, yeah. and then Hollywood takes that and goes, we'll make it bigger and better, you know, and it'll be our version of it. And, and that's what you get, like to basically exactly what you're saying. Right. Isn't it amazing how 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 bigger and be bigger and better almost never is. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy in the human mind that, that, that there's bigger and better. Yeah. There's a bigger and better Coke. There's right. a bigger and better fucking taco. And there's a bigger and better nightmare in Elm Street, and none of it's really true. Yeah, you know, it's 
we were grateful to get the first fucking Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. You know, it's been, let alone in the condition we got it in. The first Nightmare on Elm Street, we could very well be sitting here today not talking about this franchise. But we're talking about this franchise because of the first movie. Not because of the fifth movie, because of the first movie. And to have the balls and the audacity to go, I'm going to make this bigger and better with all the money in the world and fucking Michael Bay and this guy and whoever the fuck else, like it just didn't matter. It equated to a big pile of goulash. <laughs> goulash, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well you. said, well said. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I hope Robert doesn't return to the role. I think he needs. I, hope, yeah, no, I think that's... I think he needs to just let it go. And yeah. I, I, you know, it's gonna get remade again at some point. It's gonna happen. I mean, just oh, like yeah. we're gonna all yeah. die, and Friday Thirteenth, Halloween, and Nightmare is yeah. going to continue beyond yeah. our lifespan. I mean, oh, completely. It, uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. just just like they keep making Frankenstein's and and yeah. Dracula's and it, it'll just keep happening. Well, that, as long as there's money, the, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll keep happening. You, know? exactly. that, that, you just mentioned something interesting that I thought about earlier. Like you remember when, you remember when the Kenneth Branagh Frankenstein came out? Oh yeah. If Kenneth Branagh had said at the time, I'm going to remake the James whale Frankenstein mm -hmm. and I'm going to put a guy in Karloff esque makeup we all would have gone, fuck you. <laughs> right. Robert yeah. De Niro, no Robert De Niro. Hmm. Don't yeah. you dare. Don't you dare put him in fucking with the Frankenstein, the, the Frankenstein makeup. Mm -hmm. the, he doesn't have Karloff's forehead. Doesn't have <laughs> Karloff's jawline. Don't just don't even try it. And he didn't. He made, he made De Niro a completely different Frankenstein. And you either liked it or you didn't like it, you know? And they didn't do that with this. They kind of did the fucking Indiana Jones sand swap where they went, <laughs> you know, like, no one will know. Yeah. It, like, it, they, at least it, it had that, like, it had that carelessness to it of like, oh, let's just, you know, another guy in a sweater and burnt makeup will work fine. Mm -hmm. No, it, it mm -hmm. didn't, it didn't work. You know? Yeah. Another thing is you never got any explanation for the glove, like, because he wasn't killing the kids. So right. what was what was the purpose of this glove? Right. You know? What was he doing with it? Yeah. yeah. What? And, yeah. and you, know, you guys said it was conflicted. It totally was conflicted. Yeah. You could tell they were scared to yeah. lean into it yeah. and go, "No, here's what he really was. He was a bad dude." Mm -hmm. Like if anyone did anyone see the first episode of Freddy's Nightmares when that show came out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Wasn't, that the that or, wasn't that the origin Freddy Krueger yeah. episode? The it first, was the pilot. The first yeah. episode's fantastic. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like him in court with the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Robert plays himself. And But, like, there's shoulda, coulda, woulda, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody, so if it needed to happen, it could have happened so much better. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Now you can't go, you can't. Because in my head, I go, I want to see the origin story of Freddy Krueger, okay? Yeah. But you can't do that now. You could, but you can't. Because in your brain, it's going back to what your point is, you see this, you have this vision, your ideal Freddy Krueger. Chances are it's Robert Englund. Chances are it's that glove. Chances are it's one of the movies. Let's just say one of the first two. But, you know, and so now you can't do it because Robert Englund's not that young. You can't, you hopefully maybe you can find somebody who looks an awful lot fucking like him or do a likeness makeup maybe, but, but like that's now you can't do that. you you fucked up. You should have been able to, you should have done that before. Well, you know? I think a lot of it had to do with kind of like what Fred Decker was saying in our last interview, when he were talking about what happened with him on RoboCop three, the, mm -hmm. the the companies were also trying to how can we market freddy to the kids video right. games yeah. toys you know all this merchandise you know the the 900 number where you could call up freddy yeah. and yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. rapping freddy putting out the yeah, records and, that? you know yeah it just got silly and they they were like well we can't have this slimy mean looking child molester be but we need we need fun freddy we need one-liner yeah. freddy you know yeah yeah 
There, I bought it. I I still have it in the box somewhere. The talking I have the doll, talking Freddy doll. Oh, we all did. Those things lasted two weeks on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Before every parent, every parent walked by and went, Pee Wee Herman, Gumby, Batman, <laughs> burnt child molester <laughs> that right. talks to you. <laughs> all right. I worked yeah. I worked at Spencer's where we sold those <laughs> back in the day. I mean that that was such a fascinating time because like the remember when Fre- D, uh, Fresh Prince Will Smith came out with Nightmare on My Freddy Street. Song. Yeah, Nightmare on My Street and the fa- I had the Fat Boys tape and I had in the I didn't have a lot of Nintendo games but one of the only Nintendo games I had was a Nightmare on Elm Street game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you think about just the subject matter of that stuff, like pinball machine, everything. How that penetrated the pop culture lexicon into the toy stores of my neighborhood. Well, that's why that's what I'm saying. They started to dumb it down and yeah. and and make him safer for the masses. Homo- yeah, they they homogenized it. Yeah, the shit out of it. Yeah, and I think just let it, or maybe just let it. I don't know. I, I hate, I always hate to say, let it die or let it just let it be and spend all that energy, time and money into coming up with something new. But sure. that's, that's the dumbest thing to ever say in Hollywood because then it's just not going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's just, they're just, somebody will redo it. Hey, look, if my phone rang yesterday and they said, Chris, you want to do for Freddy Krueger for a new nightmare? And I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'll be there <laughs> in one second. You know, yeah. I would do it. Yeah. Um, Maybe I'd read the script first, but, but, you know, it's like, I would do it because it's Freddy Krueger. You know, that's one of the things that I don't know if I'd do it on Robert Englund, <laughs> you know, that might be. A, I don't, well, I, I mean, yeah, should've... it's like when the opportunity presents itself, your attitude changes, you know? Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I remember when I interviewed Rob for the 25 years of terror documentary, I asked him specifically, if they ever asked you to remake Halloween, would you do it? And he said, hell no. He goes, would you remake the wild bunch? Two years later, he's remaking it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah, you get the call, and it's like, oh, well, wait, well, no, this is real. Hmm. Well, I, you, you, know? you also you also kind of want to be a part of a legacy, of in course. History, you know, yeah. I mean, that's Halloween. Look at Halloween with me. I'm like, yeah, I'll do Halloween. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'll do it because I I love that friend. I love that Halloween, so I want to be part of that legacy. You know, so and there'll be somebody I, yeah. after you making it again. When oh, absolutely. All, you know, I mean, it's absolutely. Yeah. It's gonna oh, keep I gotta, going to I got to show this. This is for Zach, by the way. Oh, the thorn. <laughs> <laughs> that much of a dork. Yeah. You both have it. You, yeah. You both have it. That's so yeah, funny. We're nice. both part six dorks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this. This was a lot of fun. This is the most fun interview i've ever done ever. <laughs> they were all if they were all about this and like this i do i do way more <laughs> we'll come back you should come back and and we'll talk about something else pick another oh, franchise oh, yeah. as long as it isn't amityville we're trying to avoid that one <laughs> uh jamie from twisted wants to do amityville and i'm like dude there's 15 movies bro i ain't sitting through all oh that. jesus there's fi- there really? there's fucking 15 of them if you count all the different remakes and everything, there's 15. Oh, wow. Holy how shit. I had no idea. Oh, how many children in the corn movie? Seven, maybe? Too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Jeez. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't be don't be texting me, Sean, and going, hey, we're we're ranking the leprechaun movies tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be like, Fuck or the puppet masters. There's like or the fucking eleven masters. or twelve of oh, those things. Jesus. Yeah. And they're <laughs> shit, they're already up to like nine saw films or something isn't there there's a bunch of i mean there's yeah it's crazy yeah. how they crank yeah. these things out now yeah mm-hmm. it's 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 all goulash anyway <laughs> it's all <laughs> cool <laughs> all right man well thanks a lot um I'll thank be- you so much it was an honor to have you and a pleasure and uh, and had a great time thank you so oh, much oh you guys are the best this was so fun thank you guys all right, thank you, so <laughs> all right. Ready, ready for right fingers <laughs>
and there is some interesting parts with like how she keeps running around the corner and it's like wait a second haven't we done this i feel like we've done this before and they keep you know it's like she's kind of a groundhog day thing they were doing there um, i think that's four is that four yeah. <laughs> is it? yeah i think i think a couple of these you're referring to a different movie Wait, no, no, the motorcycle thing is five, right? That's that's five. Yeah. Yeah. That's but isn't that doesn't that happen in five? The scene where she's outside the diner and she keeps getting in the truck. Yeah. I think that's four. Uh, I don't even know. This I don't know. I, I, I could be wrong. <laughs> because I told you, it's all goulash. I told <laughs> all you. <good> <laughs>